Welcome to this screencast, which will help orient you on the GAS Law Program designed by Haynes, Gelder, and Abraham at Oklahoma State University. I'd encourage you to pause the screencast as we're going to allow you time to write down your answers on the worksheet. To help us get us oriented, there are a few pieces of simulation that are worth noting. The primary section on the left over here gives a 2D representation of a gas contained in a sealed container. The green circles represent atoms of helium that are constantly moving and bouncing into each other on the walls of the container. At the top right section up here, there are a number of variables that are shown that can be manipulated through these slider bars. It is worth noting that the one selected by the radio button over here, pressure in this particular case, is a variable that's allowed to freely float to respond to changes in any of the other variables. On the lower right over here, there's a section that provides a variety of graphical representations. Right now, it is currently showing the distribution of velocities of all the gas molecules inside the container. The tall, thin green line right here represents the average velocities of all the atoms, whereas the horizontal thin green line that curves over here shows the theoretical distribution of all the different atoms. You may want to pause the screencast for a moment to answer the first couple of questions on the worksheet. Over here on the left side, there's one of the atoms that has a red dot on it. Let's hit the Enable Tracking button over here so that we can watch its path. Take a moment and watch its motion and see if you can understand why the atom might change speed or direction. What actually happens that causes that change? You may wish to pause the screen in order to record your observations. Now let's look at the relationship between pressure and volume. Note that we currently have the pressure selected in the radio button up here, and then we're gonna adjust the volume. Currently the volume is at 38 liters, and the pressure is at 2.38 atmospheres. We can slide the volume down. Let's see if we can cut it in half. Oh, missed it just a little bit, so we'll change the number over here. we can get it set exactly. The pressure was at 2.38, so what is it now that the volume is half? You may wish to pause the screencast to be able to answer these questions and write them down in the worksheet. Now what did you notice about the speed of the atoms when we changed the volume? Let's look at this just a little bit more carefully because probably that's not something you were paying attention to. Let me first increase the volume back up back to about 38. And then we can decrease it back down. So what happened to the speed of the atoms? And what evidence do you have to support your claim? You may wish to pause the screencast to be able to answer these questions and write them down in the worksheet. The pressure of the gas results from gas particles colliding with the walls of the container. Use this to explain the relationship between gas pressure and volume. This could be a good time to pause the screencast and write down your answers. The simulation is really nice in that it allows us to add a different gas. Currently, we have four moles of helium within the container and it has a pressure of 4.77 atmospheres. Let's see if we can put neon in there instead. What did you notice about the total pressure? What do you notice about the speed of the neon atoms compared to the helium atoms? And based on your observations, what impact does molecular weight then have on the speed of the particles? This screencast has hopefully given you the opportunity to get to know the basics of the gas law simulation program. I'd encourage you to go to the URL on the screen 
or to click the link below to go to the simulation and continue to explore the many other relationships between temperature, volume, pressure, moles, type of gas, and speed of atoms. Thank you for watching this screencast.